Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be doing a review and wear test over the brand new Laura Mercier Light Catcher Setting Powders, and I'm so excited to test these powders out on camera and give you guys the full rundown because Laura Mercier makes um, what I consider some great setting powders. I love her traditional translucent setting powder, and I also love her secret brightening powder. That was like, that's like an OG favorite under eye setting powder for me. So I finally got my hands on them. I picked up two of the shades. Um, so we are going to test out both of these and I'm going to give you guys my full thoughts. Uh, this is going to be somewhat of a first impression because I actually haven't worn these, but I am going to take you guys throughout the day. We're going to look at how it is, you know, lasting throughout the day and if it does live up to the claims that it makes. So Laura Mercier just launched this new formula of setting powder. They launched it in three shades. It retails for $39. They launched with the shade Celestial Light, which is a champagne beige, and it is described as being for fair to light skins. They also launched the shade Honey Star, which is a golden peach, and it is best for tan or medium tones that have a golden or olive undertone, and I picked both of those up. So I picked up Celestial Light, and I also picked up Honey Star. And they also launched with Cosmic Rose, which is described as being a bronze rose and best for medium to deep skin tones. And I did swatch this one in store, and it definitely felt like it would be too dark and too pink for me as a setting powder. So the Laura Mercier Light Catcher Setting Powder are described as being a super finely milled luminous light creating setting powder. It claims to have a 12 hour wear. It also claims to blur pores, texture, and fine lines in the skin. They say unlike other luminous powders, it is weightless pearls that blend into the skin becoming one, which helps with the appearance of texture in the skin. It is a super finely milled powder and it is also fragrance free. Now I did look online and do a little bit of research to see how to wear these powders because honestly when I swatched these in Sephora, uh, they looked more like highlighting powders to me. I was a little confused about setting makeup with these, setting all over the face, but online on lauramercier.com, it does say that you can set all over the face or you can use them in the highlights and high planes of your face if you want to create a little dimension to your face. I'm actually going to test them all over the face because <laughs> I want to see, are these like truly that finely milled that the pearlescent really does melt into the skin and it doesn't look too shiny or um, too pearlescent, too glowy because you guys know how I feel about excessively glowy products. It tends to magnify texture and pores in my experience. They are also described as being translucent and they retail for $39. So I think what's best is I'm actually going to kind of dump a little bit of each shade into the lid because the lid has this white background and I feel like you'll be able to see the difference in the tone of the two. So this is the Celestial Light here. I don't wanna make a big mess on my desk here. And this is, is it Honey Star? Uh, this is the darker one, obviously. So you can see that this looks kind of like a bronzer. I'm going to show you guys what these um, swatch like. Let's see here. Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to show you guys kind of on my fingertips. Do you see the difference between the two? So this is Celestial Light and this one is Honey Star. To be quite honest, I don't know which one is going to work. When I imagine using Celestial Light all over my face, I feel like it's way too light. And when I imagine using Honey Star all over my face, I feel like it's too dark. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply one on one side and one on the other, and we're going to see um, how this works. So I'm going to just dump some into the lid and we are gonna use that to work off of. Now, of course, depending on which tool you use to apply these, that's definitely gonna determine how um, much shimmer and color you get. I don't wanna use anything really dense, so I am going to use, I'm actually gonna use um, our 104 brush because I was thinking of using the 108, but the 108 is much smaller, much more dense. This is, well, I normally use this to set under the eyes and set all of my face um, precision, you know, precisely. I think using a product that has pearlescence, I'm afraid it's gonna be too much. Maybe I'll play with it and see, but I'm gonna use the 104 because I feel like it is a safe bet. All right, so we are up close and personal. I want you guys to really see how this um, lays on the skin. We're gonna do Celestial Light on the right side, and I'm just gonna pick all of the product up in my brush, 
and we're gonna set all over the face. So let's see, I have all of my makeup on. I didn't set at all with powder, so I just have foundation. The foundation that I used today was the Lancome uh, Tint Edol Stick Foundation. That has a nice kind of natural matte finish. It's not pearlescent or glowy. I didn't wanna use anything that was a dewy or glowy finish. I wanted to really um, kind of judge, you know, the glow from the powder alone. Okay, wow, that looks a little too shimmery. Let's see if we can blend that out. So it definitely creates a lot of glow and luminosity there, a bit more than I expected. Just, I mean, I shouldn't say expected because I actually expected it to, but by what I read online and what I'm seeing here, it's a little bit different. Um, now, it's really just there, you know, but keep in mind the first place you put your brush is where the most product's gonna be applied. So when I actually go all over the rest of the face, you don't get that same effect. I think I kind of messed up by applying it right there and applying it where I tend to have the large amount of pores. <laughs> what I should have done is blotted it on my hand first and then gone to my face. That's what I should have done, but okay. Well, that is a good lesson. So um, otherwise, in the other areas of the face, it looks very pretty, very light. I don't see an excessive amount of pearlescent at all. The forehead looks beautiful. Um, I wouldn't have guessed that I used a setting powder that has pearlescence if I look everywhere except right here, which is where I first applied that that um, my brush. Let's go in and use the other side and we're gonna try that technique. So I've picked up the product and actually picked up quite a bit. I'm going to, um, you know what, I have a towel here. I'm just gonna kind of blot it on the towel lightly and then go to the face. Okay, so I have applied them both all over. Um, I do want to use my 108 so you guys can see what these do. Um, I think my thoughts right now is that it's beautiful, but it definitely is going to be pretty glowy when you first put your brush down. Even though I blotted my brush over here, I still feel like I got quite a bit of shimmer. Um, this is more shimmer. It's pretty on the cheeks, it's fine on the cheeks, but this is more shimmer that I would, than I would want anywhere else. Let me take the 108 brush and um, let's see. Okay, so do you see that? That is creating quite a bit of glow. This definitely looks like a powder that I would use just to highlight. Like I wouldn't want this effect here all over my face, so keep that in mind. If you're used to using a puff to apply setting powder or a small brush, I would advise against putting it all over. If you want a very subtle highlight, it's nice. Okay, let's go on the other side with Honey Star. I think both shades work on me though. Honey Star is obviously gonna give a warmer kind of sun-kissed glow. They're pretty. Okay, so even though they do go on pearlescent, you can kind of press and play and they blend out and do kind of melt into the skin, but definitely more glow than I expected based on what I read online. But honestly, when I look at the product, this is kind of what I would expect. Okay, very pretty. As far as blurring pores, um, I wouldn't say that I notice any of that, but I will say that I do not notice that it magnifies my pores, which is usually the case when I'm using a powder that has pearlescence. Yeah, I don't think that it magnified my pores here. And typically, any time I put shimmer there, it always does, so that is a bonus. I wouldn't say that it blurred them or made them smoother, though. But this is very, do you guys see that? I mean, that is very, ooh, glowy. <laughs> So, you know, it's okay and it's pretty here, but if I were to do that all over my face, mm, I would feel like the Tin Man. I kind of like Honey Star better on me because it just looks more natural. This looks more like I could fool you into natural light. This looks like I've applied some makeup, which brings me to my Believably Glow video that I did about a week or two ago. I'll link that below in case you missed it, but I have some tips on how to create a natural looking glow versus something like this. Okay, you guys, I am going to wear this around today. It is about 11.48. I probably won't do multiple check-ins throughout the day. I'll probably do one or two um, and just see how this lasts throughout the day. See if I feel like I need to touch up with a matte powder and yeah, just kind of how it looks. Does it move? Does it break apart? Does it you know make me look shiny or greasy in a couple hours? We will see. Hey everyone, I'm in my closet doing some much needed organization and I was just checking out my makeup in the mirror and I wanted to do a, a check-in with you guys. It is about 2.45 p.m. So I forget what time it was that I did my makeup earlier. It's been a few hours at least. I haven't touched up with any other powder um, since and things are looking really good. I actually went outside and walked down the street to a neighbor's house to see if 
my little friend could play with Kate and it's like a hundred degrees outside. So it is hot. I didn't spend much time out there. I was out there for maybe 10 minutes, but still that's a lot of time outside and hundred temperature heat with a full face of makeup on. So I thought I would give you guys a kind of check in and show you how things are looking. Um, I have this really bright overhead light above me. So, I mean, it's actually doing a great job of kind of showing you you know, truly how the makeup looks. From afar, the skin looks really pretty. I mean, it really does look beautiful and glowy without being overly done at all. When you get up close and you really look, I mean, you can you can see that the makeup looks heavy. Um, and I think that's a byproduct of putting a glowy, you know, setting powder all over my face. Um, I had a thought earlier that it looks really beautiful, but it's probably not a product that I personally would want to use in the morning for a full-time day, like for full day. This would probably go into my category of products that I do for an evening out or for nighttime makeup. You know, when you're doing your makeup at four or 5 p.m. and you're going out for the night, but you know you'll be home by 10 o'clock and it won't be so hot and you won't be in the sun, all those factors. It's really, really beautiful. But again, it's a little too shiny all over for my comfort. I think it's still looking really pretty in the areas that I put it to highlight the face. But when I look on the nose and the forehead, it just, you know, make, it just looks like a lot of makeup. And I think that that's a byproduct of all the shine. So I will do a check-in, of course, later today. I think I am going to set it with a translucent matte powder here shortly to just kind of set the oil. I also wanted to note that, that this would not be a product that I would recommend to touch up with throughout the day. Um, you know, use it in the morning if you want an all over glow, but definitely don't keep it in your bag and retouch up and retouch up throughout the day. Not that you would, you know, it's a large product, but I would recommend going to a sheer translucent powder to do that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to see how much shine and oil this cuts down and then I'll be back on in a few hours and give you guys my final thoughts. So we're coming up to 7 30 PM and this is my last check-in with you guys. I'm going to give you my final thoughts. I have you guys zoomed in really close so you can see what the skin looks like. Now I did touch up since my last check-in with you guys. Um, I did use a translucent matte setting powder. I used La Mer to freshen my makeup up shortly after that. And it did a great job of kind of mattifying the skin and absorbing excess oil without taking away from the luminous effect of the Laura Mercier setting powder. Now, when I'm looking in right now, um, you still see that pearlescent glow from the Laura Mercier powder. So I do think that the powder is still doing its job in that sense. Um, when I look at the area that I kind of packed on Celestial Light with the 108, it still um, it still actually looks pretty true to what it did before. Um, keep in mind, this is a stronger highlight than I prefer, but um, you know I know it's just a personal preference. It hasn't moved, it hasn't faded, it's still there. On the other side where I use the 108 and I use the star, um, the shade Honey Star, you can see it's a little bit lighter, um, but it also looks really nice. It hasn't really separated at all. Um, overall, I think it's a beautiful powder. I think if you like a subtle, luminous glow, it is definitely one that's worth checking out. If you are someone, obviously, that likes a matte finish, <clears throat> you might not even be interested in this video to start with, but this would definitely be one that I would shy away from. I didn't know what to expect from this. You know, I didn't, uh, I was a little surprised when it said to set all over the face, but if I'm being completely honest yet still, you know, critical, um, I think that you can definitely pull that off. I would just be very careful and mindful of the application um, tool that you use. If you use a brush, use something big and fluffy. I use the BK Beauty 104 because I felt like it was large and fluffy enough. But if you remember, I still got a lot of uh, payoff when I first put that brush down. So I would even go with something, you know, if you want a softer uh, application like the 102, it's bigger, fluffier, and I would definitely pat it on your hand or a towel before you go into the face. I think it's a great product. Will it be something that I will use every day? No. Um, it is something that I will pull out when I am going out at night. I don't go out very often, but when I have an evening event, I'm doing my makeup for the evening. The reason being is because one, it's not as hot in the evening as it is during the day. So I can tolerate a little bit more shine than I can, you know, doing my makeup in the morning and going throughout about my day. Also too, in the evening, you know, I just want my makeup to look a little bit, you know, special, a little different than I do my day to day. And I do want a little bit of a glow. I feel like it's a little more more of an evening 
tailored product for me personally. Um, so overall, I think it's a great product. I do, I think it's a great product. I will not use it every day though. I will not use it in the morning because I think that, um, you know, by the end of the day, I'm just a little shinier than I like to be. So that is my review of this product. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you've picked this product up and tried it for yourself, let us know your thoughts. Um, you know, even if it completely disagrees with everything I said, let us know. I love to hear from you guys. I love to hear what you love, what you don't, what you agree with, what you don't, and also share your skin type and your texture. I am pretty normal lately. My skin has actually been a little bit drier um, and I'm 38 years old. You know, I have pretty normal skin. I feel like I have good skin. Um, I do have texture, you know, in my pores that I, is probably my big biggest concern with my skin. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.